good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer with the Parish of Jarrow and Simonside. It's Monday the 17th of January already. And I'm just going to find the link for today's order of service on the Church of England website. So really you can just listen in and add your own prayers. You can follow the order of service online and join in with all of the responses. Or you can follow with your Bible at home. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Carol. So if I drop that link in, and then if you would like to follow with your Bible at home, I can tell you that our psalm this morning is Psalm 145. And our gospel reading is Matthew 24, 1 to 14. So I'll drop them in for you as well. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 145 and our Gospel reading is Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 to 14. So I'm wondering now, shall we just begin with our moment of silence and our words um, from Psalm 46? So we'll just pause. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. So welcome if you're part of our regular online congregation. Welcome if you're catching up with this um, later on in the day or on YouTube. So let's begin our service this morning. Today the church remembers Anthony of Egypt. He was a hermit and an abbot in 356, 356 AD. The church also remembers Charles Gore, bishop, founder of the community of the resurrection. He died in 1932. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world as the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, 
So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 145 and the refrain is, Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O God my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your domain endures throughout all ages. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. 
the Lord watches over those who love him. But all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. And let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Let us pray. King of the universe, you show the bright glory of your reign in acts of mercy and enduring love. Raise the spirits of the downcast and restore those who have fallen away, that we may sing forever of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our canticle this morning, words from Isaiah chapter 60, is the song of the new Jerusalem. The refrain at the very beginning and the end is, Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your glory will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises. And above you, God's glory appears. As mentioned earlier, our Gospel reading is from St Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 to 14. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will this be? 
and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But this is the beginning of the birth plans. Then they will hand you over to be tortured, and will put you to death and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But anyone who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If we can just pause there for a moment, just think about what we may have heard this morning. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Eva. I do have a reflection for you for today from the Church of England book Reflections for Morning Prayer. Happy to put a link in the comments if you'd like to look this up. I have it on the phone as an app so I can't really show you the book. I'll just be showing you my phone. This is by John Inge. And his focus is on Matthew 24, 1 to 14, but particularly verse 9. A difficult phrase. And it is, they will hand you over to be tortured. The words of this passage are chilling and horribly relevant in today's world. We see nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom, as Jesus prophesied. Christians today are being handed over to be tortured and put to death, just as Jesus predicted they would more than ever before. Terribly, There is widespread evidence showing that persecution of Christians now is worse than it has ever been in terms of numbers. 
and that Christians constitute by far the most widely persecuted religion in today's world. In its comprehensive study for 2018, the respected Pew Research Centre concluded that Christians were targeted in 145 countries, a rise from 125 countries in 2015. It is easy enough for those of us who enjoy freedom to practice our faith, to read the words, the one who endures to the end will be saved. But they are hugely costly ones for millions of our fellow Christians. What should we do? The first thing is surely to give heartfelt thanks for the freedom we enjoy and never take it for granted. Our experience is not the norm. Quite the opposite. We are very blessed. The second is to give our support, prayerful and financial, to organisations that work for the rights of Christian minorities. One such, Open Doors, states on its website, over 340 million Christians are persecuted. They follow Jesus, no matter the cost. With your help, we're bringing them hope and resource. So that's from the Open Doors website. Just looking at comments, Carol, you've picked up that very phrase, haven't you? in your reflections, but anyone who endures to the end will be saved. Thank you, Carol. Our response to scripture this morning is from Psalm 96. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. And the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. The refrain at the very beginning and the end. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father 
Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. It's time now for our prayers and we'll have a time of silent prayer. Please do pray for one another. Just wondering where to begin. Perhaps we begin with those who cannot freely practice their faith. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, as we come before you this morning, The words of St Matthew's Gospel still ringing in our ears. The reality that 2,000 years later so many Christians, our brothers and sisters, are persecuted for their discipleship, for their love of you and your son. pray for churches that are underground. We pray for those whose Bibles are hidden. We pray for brothers and sisters who have been made an example of. We pray for those who languish in jail. We pray for all who are unable to worship you in freedom and in peace. We pray for those with oversight of them, those with power, leaders, policy makers, those enforcing their views and rules. We pray, Lord, that you will remove their heart of stone towards your church. Give them a heart of flesh. And we pray for change. We pray for peace. We pray that your Holy Spirit will comfort all who are isolated, cut off or living in sin. And we pray that the wider church will continue to support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Loving God, we pray for all peoples and all places, but this morning we lift to you the places from where we are gathered. Our families and friends, our congregations and parishes, the towns and cities where we are dwelling. We lift the men, women and children of our community before you. We ask you to bless these gifts. We ask for our communities to flourish. And we seek fruitfulness in our lives. fruitfulness for the gospel. And as it now feels your church is in a time of great change, as it has been so many times before, we pray for the men, women and children who form your church who are your church, your living stones. We pray that we can remain flexible as we hold firmly on to you. We pray for the gift of discernment as we seek to follow in the footsteps of your Son. And as we get ready for the week of Christian unity and prayer, we pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to unite us so that we are one church, one church as we each share the one bread, the living bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, this Monday morning we pray for our schools, colleges and universities, all who are returning to work, thinking particularly of the many drivers that will drive through this parish to the Tyne Tunnel this morning. Just thinking of all those journeys All those destinations. And Lord, as we come to you with so many things on our hearts and minds, in a time of silence, we offer to you those prayers deep within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful God, we pray for anyone who is sick at this time, in mind, body or spirit, for all who care for them, for all who walk alongside them. We lift to you this morning, everyone on our parish prayer list, and those people on our hearts today. May they know your healing presence, your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are receiving end-of-life care today, praying for their loved ones and all who are caring for them, praying particularly for those 
in intensive care in hospital in South Shields and Sunderland. We pray also for all who have died recently. and those who are grieving at this time. Praying for anyone attending a family funeral today. Lord, we commend all those who have died and all those whose years mind falls at this time. We commend them to your eternal care. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And our collect for today as we remember Saint Anthony. Most gracious God, who called your servant Anthony to sell all that he had and to serve you in the solitude of the desert. By his example, may we learn to deny ourselves and to love you before all things. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for joining us this morning. Um, if you've been following what's happening or you're actually in the parish, if you're following what's happening, in the parish you'll know that we have um, an important day ahead for us here as we're working with our partners in the diocese communities together Durham and churches together across South Tyneside we're seeking to help our communities get back on their feet and to offer a place where anyone who's lonely or isolated can come along and feel most welcome so there will be more information of that in due course. But the first places of welcome in the parish begin tomorrow, 10 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock at St Peter's, Wednesday, 11 o'clock at St Simon's, and Thursday, 11 o'clock at St John the Baptist. So um, if you're miles and miles away, could you just hold all of this activity in prayer? That would be fantastic. And the first place of welcome here on South Tyneside will be 11 o'clock today at the Action Station. So help us to hold that. We'd be very grateful. We are in God's hands with this. In the meantime, whatever you are doing this week ahead, you know you'll have your live stream services, Holy Eucharist with Reverend Stuart and our lay minister Jackie, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock on this Facebook page. Then all being well, I'll be back with you with more 
daily prayer on Friday at 8 o'clock. So let me send you off out into the week with God's blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you this day and always and grant you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye.